Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigations will now come to order. The chair recognizes himself for a five-minute opening statement. Today's hearing is about what likely is the most consequential cyber attack in healthcare history. How could something like this happen? How did consolidation in the health insurance industry reach such a state that a single ransomware attack on one company can cripple the flow of payments and claims for months? Change Healthcare, a United Health subsidiary acquired in 2022, was subject to the cybersecurity attack. It operates the largest electronic data interchange clearinghouse in the nation. Roughly 50% of U.S. medical claims pass through or touch Change's clearinghouse, making it an essential link between providers and insurers. A single company having this much of the medical claims processing market. Share, the market share makes them a large target for bad actors. It is even more astounding when you consider that the attack itself reportedly occurred using compromised credentials without multi-factor authentication. This type of authentication is pretty standard defense to prevent cyber attacks. I'm concerned also about patients who have been affected. Many patients were left having to pay large amounts of money out of pocket for their medications because the pharmacy couldn't process their claims or their copay coupons. The Marion Family Pharmacy in Marion, Virginia, in my district, said the biggest effect has been patients not being able to afford their medication without copay assistance cards. The owner of the pharmacy even said, and I quote, we've got people walking away from diabetes medicines, antipsychotics, and ADHD medications, end quote. One specific example was a patient having to pay $1,100 for medication since the pharmacy was not able to process her copay assistance card due to the cyber attack. United is contractually obligated to pay for these medications, yet patients are still paying premiums and forced to either walk away, pay, pay large sums of money for their medications, or even having to borrow money from friends, family, or worse, interest-bearing cash advances off of their credit cards. Providers were also deeply affected by this cyber attack. In the initial phase, providers were left in the dark as to, as to why United stopped processing claims. There was deep uncertainty about how to get their claims to flow uninterrupted. The loan program was minimal and restrictive, while bringing on many unrecognized expenses for the providers, such as switching clearinghouses and managing prior authorization. It's particularly troublesome also because doctors are worried about keeping their practices open. United, by shutting down its clearinghouse and effectively stopping all payments on claims, making it more difficult to continue providing services. One suburban Philadelphia physician who runs a $6 million a year practice was offered only $3,300 by United Health's emergency loan program. She might have to sell her practice. How many millions of dollars of interest alone has United made from holding on to money that it would have had to pay to providers or for patients? How many millions of surgeries, treatments, and prescriptions were delayed, or worse yet, were either canceled or they just didn't take their medicine? I understand the substantial task United is facing while dealing with the fallout from the cyber attack, and the cyber attackers are the bad guys. But I look for an explanation on why United didn't have a backup plan. And if they did have one, it obviously failed resulting in the federal government having to step in and try to help. Additionally, we do not know how many patients had their health information breached. Last week, United conceded that a personal health care information and data of a substantial, quote, substantial portion of Americans has been stolen. At this hearing, I hope we can get an understanding of just how many Americans fall within the United's definition of substantial proportion. Even though United paid the ransom, we now have reports that cyber criminals are releasing patient information, billing records, and other personal and sometimes very private health data held by United Health Group onto the dark web in spite of having paid the ransom. It's what happens when you deal with thieves. I'm hopeful this hearing will shed light on these issues so we can understand the full picture. I can assure you that this subcommittee We'll be watching closely, and I'm always willing to hold follow-up hearings if needed. All right, that being said, I yield back and now recognize the ranking member of the subcommittee, Ms. Castor, for her five-minute opening statement.